because nothing makes me happier, Jill, than messing with audio files. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Linux <laughs> Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break and squeak. Yeah, we're talking about squeaking. I got a squeaky chair <laughs> that I didn't fix yesterday. You ever do that? I do that. Um, so sit back for the entirety of a day. It'll be that one thing. I got to get this done. I got to get this done. Got to get this done. And the next day, you remember, I never got that done. That was the mm -hmm. case. I got to come back because I replaced mm -hmm. the shock in this chair um, last month. I bought a replacement yeah, shock. Yeah, it wasn't that long, long ago. I remember. And got to go back and retorque it. And eh, it just got a little wiggle and juggle to it. Jill, you're back from walking around watching lasers being shot yeah. into the air without care. Yeah. No, it was it was beautiful. It's a it was a outdoor walkthrough called Astro Lumina. And it wasn't Christmas themed. It, it it just happens to be this time of year, but it wasn't Christmas themed. In fact, the installation, the light installations were going through the birth and death of stars. It was really quite amazing. Like one of the first ones had, I was telling Van, it had a big huge uh telescope uh array structure and then uh lights shooting out of it and changing color it, it was just it was freaking beautiful and we had the, uh, so stars dies and run around and scream yes like, burn burn <laughs> i hope you had in class planets around you may you yeah. all die you know very festive things yeah but it was really nice because it was done like you know it was more like a, a, a museum walkthrough as opposed to a typical light show. So it, it had, you, you, you would hit one of the exhibits, like the birth of a star, and then you'd go to the next exhibit, like the growth of the star. And it was, it was really neat. <laughs> fun. <laughs> Pretty fun. Um, I should have had a video out yesterday. I've, I've been working on, it's kind of a history project, a little bit of one for the, First, FireWire audio interface and why that came about. Now, as I often do, like that video is done. It was rendered. It was up. I've been writing, you know, the little bit of history for it uh, for Linux Gamecast, but with the article itself and all of the benchmarks and documentation, how to get it set up, because I thought it would be an interesting thing. Let's take a bit of audio history from 2001, see how it works on a modern computer in 2023. Mm -hmm. Insert curtain, you're on a modern cpu linux operating system you know i didn't pull out a system with wood grain on it and, <laughs> um, why we ended up using firewire and how that led to usb and thunderbolt mm -hmm. and so on and so on that video was done until monday evening where my brain did the thing of like there's a great thing to put in it i'm not gonna spoil it oh okay I don't spoil it. So even our beautiful patrons who've already seen the video, the rough cut that I have, there's going to be new stuff for you to watch. And it's going to spark a little bit of an internet argument. I guarantee it. Oh, cool. <laughs> it is. It's going to get people like, Ur. and uh, it kind of gave me an idea for maybe something, a standalone video just to, because uh, nothing makes me happier, Jill, than messing with audio files. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Speaking from an engineer perspective, it's it's mm -hmm. it's cruel and unusual, but it brings me joy, and I, yes, I love it, it when I get upset. <laughs> but having that, uh, just stay tuned, and uh, yeah, people were kind of uh, receptive. I, I I looked at we talked about um, on Linux Gamecast. We did a uh, we me and Pedro. Jordan decided to go to Florida against as well, yeah. but so it was just me and Pedro on Saturday. We talked about uh, a German media outlet benchmarked a couple of Linux distributions against Windows 11. And Windows 11 lost. Mm -hmm. Just lost. Like one game, one game, and it outperformed. I would think they had Arch, Nobara, and uh, Pop OS were just tap dancing all over its head. Yeah. <laughs> I loved your thumbnail for that episode. That was good. <laughs> the, the interesting thing, go back and listen to it if you want. Uh, there's timestamps on the video. Go over to Linux Gamecast or the podcast. And uh, what I thought was very fascinating because, like, nobody likes Windows 11, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone, you know, it's popular on the internet to say Windows 11 is, by, you know, 
new thing, don't like it. And there's some very valid complaints with Windows 11 I've seen brought up. But it put Windows fans in a very tricky spot because they had to defend Windows 11 mm-hmm. against Linux yeah. because yes. they, 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 they had to come up with those arguments. <laughs> you can't let those Linux nerds have a better. And so watching the same people who have been just slagging on Windows 11 this entire time have to come to its defense has just been very interesting. Very good times. It, yeah. Just great amusement for everybody involved. But it does show the strength of Linux and the work that Valve has done and everybody involved with Proton, DXVK, mm-hmm. and, you know, getting the Steam Deck mainstream ado- adoption and which just comes so far so quick. It's oh, just, it's amazing. It is. But <laughs> let's revert things just a little bit because the reason I'm talking about Windows, Linux <laughs> needs some extra Windows features and we might be getting that with System D. This update. <laughs> this is surreal. Not even bringing this, uh, being facetious <laughs> about this. We're not even joking. Uh, <laughs> a blue screen of death for Linux. This is Ars Technica writes um all this is going to be in the show notes but i had to read through this is like okay are they exaggerating like maybe because you assume they're exaggerating a little bit you're like okay this is is just something get me to click on it but i had to remember you remember the blue screens of death right joe oh yeah all all, all those years um, (laughs) there's a great clip you can find it on youtube of a i think it's either a windows 95 or windows 98 premiere demonstration Bill Gates on stage showing oh, yes. off plug yes. and play, and he plugs a scanner in live on stage. Yes, and it right blue screen. Blue screen. <laughs> yeah. Big, ginormous blue screen. It was wonderful to behold. But it was <laughs> System D255 is this is what it's called to System D BSOD. That's what it's going to be introducing. Now, <laughs> It's not as comically entertaining as you might expect it to be. It is a legitimate diagnostic tool. Mm -hmm. It is. uh, What it's going to do is it'll give you a full screen error message and a little bit of a QR code. And it's going to be like, hey, what's going on? But it's not going to do it on your desktop. This is designed to track boot failure. If you get a system that's not coming up, like I I understand the logic and it's something you can disable, you know, if you just want to read it. And I think I understand it because if you've ever had something that wouldn't post, you know, like, do you go back and you want to mount that, dig around in the logs, and maybe it, if it's informative, if it works as intended, it's a good tool. But I thought it was just kind of funny to throw out. Does Windows still have a, uh, like, error? I guess it does, right? Is it still yeah. blue? That I don't know, because I haven't used a Windows 11. <laughs> Windows 10 it was there, so I'm assuming. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so System D 255 blue screen of death is actually it's still very experimental and it could change in the future and what's interesting is how it works is any error message that reaches the log emerge level will be displayed full screen so you can take a picture of it or write it down and yes a a qr code is generated as well and ubuntu arch fedora and debian all use and rely on system d as well as many downstream distros but what was so funny is actually the first thing i thought then when the internet exploded (laughs) about a new bsod feature on linux is well linux error codes are far easier to fix than a random xvd error code on windows (laughs) this was always one of the problems with um, just windows error codes in general they've gotten yeah they've gotten better but (laughs) I don't even think they've gotten better. They've gotten less informative is what I've been told. Uh, There there used to be, you know, it would just give you a, it would barf out a string. A string of, yeah. There was a chance where you could go and Google that and track it down and like maybe maybe over the slightest chance or write it down, I guess I should say, if you were staring at a blue screen at the time. Um, (laughs) Go to Ask Jeeves and punch that in during the days, but uh, they, they weren't helpful. But if yeah. this is helpful and if it gives you a QR code, something you can pop in and it says, hey, this is what it's supposed to be. And of course, I look forward to the comments of um, yeah. so, so some people have, are hung <laughs> up like, like they're anti-system D. Yeah. Okay. Like use INET. 
like that's great. I, I'm not a huge fan of System D for any other reason than it's just new. Yeah, and you can use free of System D distros, of course. Like Debian has the Devon port. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I don't hate system D enough to use anything like that. You know, I came up with INET and like initialization scripts and in a server environment, those can get completely unhinged really quick. Mm -hmm. I've had to deal with that. Um, system D is more logical when you're dealing at scale, but yeah. I also hate dealing with system D. I don't mind system D yeah. right up until the yeah. point where I have to do something with it because I don't normally use it creating units for startup and shutdown, but I get it. Uh, but I know those people are out there and like, well, this just another nail in the coffin for system D system D's here, man. Just like, let it go, let it go. Keep fighting the good fight. If yeah. like, if that, <laughs> if that gets you up in the morning, you're like, we got to stop. So you do it. You keep <laughs> doing you. I, we can still be friends. Um, <laughs> all right. Get up fetch. Jill had yeah. to explain this to me. Yeah. So this is actually really cool. I, I found a cool and useful app a few days ago when looking for more alternatives to NeoFetch. And last week we talked about the wonderful fast fetch, neo fetch like tool. But for LWW this week, I found an interesting spin on the neo fetch paradigm. It's called GH fetch or GitHub fetch. In CLI, it lets you display a GitHub user repo or organization in beautiful terminal glory. Doesn't that look so nice? And the commands are simple uh, GH fetch um space the user or organization or gh fetch space user slash repo gh fetch displays a low poly profile pick public repos stars followers descriptions and whatever user or organization or repo you choose and i found this quite useful i actually the first thing i did is um i went i i went did a gh fetch of uh, wimpy's world and Wimpy's IA Get or Internet Archive Get app we talked about last week. It's pretty neat. I like little programs <laughs> like this. This is uh, yeah. this falls in uh, Vin's category of things that you download. Uh, how yeah. can we get this? Oh, it's available as a snap. Lovely. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> it is in the AUR, which is a good um, pip install. So a pip. Yeah. But I it does pip. fall into that category <laughs> of things that you install, you run once, and you never do it again. You're like. <laughs> never touch it yeah you at look all. at it and you're like oh that's so cool <laughs> yeah, yeah i think i'm gonna put this on my i have a list of programs like that that you will forget if you don't use them more often i have gotten in my old age better at because i immediately look at something like this and not to take anything away from it but it's like for me, I, I do the same thing with NeoFetch because I so rarely use NeoFetch, right? Yeah, yeah. But I install it, I do the thing, and I'll post it in our Discord when we're having that NeoFetch off. And, <laughs> but I immediately go back and uninstall it so mm. I don't end up with just a stacked. Because then you end up two weeks later, a month later, you're looking in your home directory. And like, <laughs> like what's this? Oh, what is <laughs> that dot thing? And then you get to yeah. look it up, and you're like, oh, right, that was the thing that I installed to take a look at the thing. So, uh huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're of a certain age. We grew up on the yeah. internet. By that, everybody, I mean we're old. <laughs> now, not necessarily wise, but we're old. Uh, <laughs> we kind of just universally, I've found most people in IT and tech have been on the internet for a couple of decades. Um, ended up with some shape, form, or fashion, a thing I call the funny pictures folder. Oh, yeah. On your yeah. desktop. Saving <laughs> funny pictures. Like, yeah, okay, that's cool. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. Um, there's, I forget the XKCD. You know what? Let's see if we can find that. Oh, yeah, that's a classic. I don't know what number that one is, but that's a classic. <laughs> is there the alternate currency? Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For the collapse of the dollar, the government has endorsed <laughs> an alternate currency. Your monetary worth is now determined by the number of funny pictures saved to your hard drive. Yes. <laughs> Do you know I had that printed out years ago? <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> Some of us have been preparing for that moment. For the whole moment. <laughs> now, walk into 2023, 
this used to be very easy to do because you had a PC, but now you have not just a mobile device, a laptop, you got multiple laptops, you got multiple, you know, tablets, mobile phones, you name it. And keeping your pun a funny picture folder, it was easy, it used to be. <laughs> and I'm getting to this. Why? Because <laughs> I want to talk about our clone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And traditional Vin's sense of taking something <laughs> very useful and reducing it down to a funny picture sync folder. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what is this? Our clone right on the tin. It tells you about it. This is just our sync for cloud storage made wicked easy. Now, I, I genuinely ran across this because I was looking for something to just quickly attach one of my Cloudflare R2 instances to my desktop. I needed that just to make my life a little bit easier. And it worked great for that project, but then I just got scrolling around, and this thing's got support for Amazon S3, Google Photos, Dropbox, Open Drive, Nextcloud, Linode. That list just keeps it's amazing. Going. <laughs> and it even has an option for fuse mounts. So you yeah, just click, click it right it. in, shows right up, you click on it, and you're done. That's not even the killer feature. Uh 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 uh. You run this, you run this, it opens up the equivalent of a text adventure game in your terminal. Yeah, it's cool. Like, <laughs> hey, what do you want to configure? This example is for Google Photos. Why? Because I guess yeah. what? Guess what? I wanted to have a funny pictures photo synced with my Google Photos on Android. Because awesome. I like to post funny pictures while we're doing the show. Mm -hmm. and, and traditionally, that has required like logging in and moving stuff over. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you say it's like, hey, what service do you want to use? You, all right. You want to set up in your remote? Give me a password. Oh, you want to use Google Photos? Okay, that's great really nothing else and it's like all right i'm going to pop open a web browser and you're going to say hey i want to make sure that this pc can access uh my google photos hit y that's it you're done mm -hmm. you're done awesome. that's it you're, you're looking around you're like no 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 there's got to be one nope done <laughs> and it's e similar Easy. with setting up cloudflare r2 um and i tried it with amazon s3 too these are places that oh, uh, we store the podcast and it just works. There's nothing awesome. to it, Joe Brian. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't didn't really have to know too much technical knowledge you know, to nothing. do it. Like yeah. if, if you played <laughs> like Zork, you could figure this out. Like you this, just this answer is, questions. <laughs> you don't typically get to say user friendly in CLI, right? Command line. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, Ben. <Beth. laughs> you're just looking at that and you're like, oh, 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 I, I thought there was gonna be I'm a little bit let down. <laughs> it's like that's too easy <laughs> yeah <laughs> you thought there were going to be some hopes to go right. through <laughs> and, and you know, admittedly like um you know when i set up my google photos thing like it was just done you create a folder and like it's on there but like oh but i want to do a fuse mount and so i can have that attached to sunar that's a little bit more but you already know if that's where you want to go but if you just want to create a folder on your file system that is going to sync with just everything that you can possibly think of multiple folders with multiple Go check out our yeah. and I see Arthur is like he's already using it at work. Yeah, key pass database. Awesome. Open source software. Go play with it. Now, we were talking in the pre-show. Uh, if you are a patron, you get that. You get the pre-show and you get the after show. Podcast format, video version. The entire live stream, if you want to relive it on your schedule. But we were talking about a very common question. Can you buy a Raspberry Pi, a Pi 5? <laughs> the answer is not really. Not right now. Yeah. No. But we can still you, be interested in them. Oh, absolutely. You can pre-order on some of the sites, yeah. but it's out of stock on others. I felt bad. I can go back and listen to the. I'm not going to repeat everything. But there's a, another post from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And they're talking about something that we all went, wait a minute, huh? When the Pi 5 was released, I'm like, where is my M.2 slot, right? Yeah. It didn't have we one. We talked about it. Yeah. They, they, they want to tell you about this little guy. That, mm -hmm. that PIP, Peripheral Component Interconnect Express. That's what you get on a Pi 5 instead of M.2. And you're like, mm -hmm. fine, I guess. Mm -hmm. But they do go on to explain to everyone like why we didn't get an m.2 on the pi 5 and three main things the price the power and just finding a spot to put it on the board that mm -hmm. was another issue you see adding that m.2 
that would have cost a wee bit more. And yeah. it would also have forced you to have a 3.3 volt, 3 amp power supply. Then, you know, what you're going to do? Well, this is what they're going to do. The, mm -hmm. This is the prototype M.2 hat. And no, it's not going to look like that. And it's no longer just a hat. So here's a picture of a thing <laughs> that is useless. I get you tried to make a joke. However, it's going to look something like that. That's the M.2 hat plus should be ready in 2024 and it's going to use their funky little connector for pci express and it'll give you that m.2 slot which we all kind of want and plus it's going to have the hat pat you know the um gpio pass through yeah so you're not going to lose that um but they're saying they had to do some work on the software the firmware bits to make sure all this works what do you think about that yeah well, th this makes sense. And, you know, this this is why the Raspberry Pi company, you know, took a bit, bit to release the hats. They were working on a new standard and needed to get the software ready for it. And, you know, when the Raspberry Pi 5 was released in October, me and Ven had talked about it. In, in the future, they would release a gigabit Ethernet with power over Ethernet plus support on a hat coming soon. They haven't announced that one yet. But I'm sure we will hear about that one very soon. But the this uh, NVMe hat, you know, is going to be on its way, and it's now coming early next year. So that's very exciting news. I was really happy to hear this news, especially you know because that that's going to be one of the first upgrades I do I to my it. Raspberry. I knew, I knew you weren't going to get through this show without holding it up. <laughs> I wrote yeah. it down. Yes. <laughs> Yay. Now, one of the questions I have is um, <laughs> for the Raspberry Pi Foundation and for the, um, which I've, I've come to find out there, there's a Raspberry, SBC, white knights, people who want to protect it. Like, you dare not talk bad about Raspberry Pi or you dare not talk about Rock mm -hmm. Pi or whoever Pi and they're going to defend it just blindly. Mm -hmm. Would adding that M.2, because that's, that's really ultimately what we want is the M.2. Yeah. slot um at least i can just speak for myself and would that have been more or less than whatever this hat's going to cost i'm guessing it would have been significantly less than yeah the added complexity of an entire new hat mm. and i don't know i i kind of hope that maybe we'll get a variant in the future maybe there'll be a hardware revision i wonder if there's more people out there like that or people are yeah. excited about and here's another thing what if I, I want to put another hat on it, Jill? Yeah, like, yeah, I, I that. want I want an M.2 and I want to add a hat to it huh. to put expansion on it. I just used up all my expansion. <laughs> Maybe they were going to have a be a wolf of cluster <laughs> hats. <Just keep> <laughs> <Yeah. them up. laughs> they got good reasons. I mean, for them, you know, and that's where it's got to make sense. They want to keep the price down, keep the footprint where it's at. And, you know, power connectors because you know people are going to plug the wrong stuff into that yeah <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that's going to wrap mm -hmm. us up um do want to thank everybody mm -hmm. uh, i see basil there with 47 month resub i saw nubbin throw down uh resub along with mir but if you want to help us out head over to linuxgamecast.com yeah. we got a support button we got patreon uh we get a just a chunk of bonus content each and every week if you want to take advantage of that if you can kick us a buck a week that'd be awesome we got Libra Pay, we got PayPal, we even got crypto, but we also have Amazon wish list. If you want to pick mm -hmm. us up something, something for the show, something we're going to show on camera, send us a little note, we'll read it. We got merch store, Amazon storefront, and of course, humble affiliate. Yeah, there's our humble links. affiliate. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that. Like, yeah. Humble is getting, I, I got to go look with like my humble notifications because I only want to be notified of uh, like the humble bundle like the big ones right the big ones same here yeah i don't like go to humble to buy stuff uh typically unless it is a bundle or a music pack or something that i can't find on steam right mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen we're gonna roll some credits thanks for checking us out Aww. live see you next week thank you to all 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 you out there who joined us in our live stream and to all our wonderful patrons include, including one of our advisors our theron who's in chat right now 
and we have our Chicago level people who are awesome, like Empty. We got our sea monsters, like System T. We've got our Death Notes, like M Fox Dog and Ogie One. And so many chairlings, I can barely read the text. <laughs> it's pretty small. <laughs> All right, everybody, get out there. Cause some trouble, have some fun with yes. open source, whatever you need to do. You know what? Even if you're running Windows 11, that's cool. That's great. Tell us how tell, tell us how it's working for you. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us <laughs> what, what colors the blue screens know. And and if they're less verbose than they used to be. <laughs> you just shake your head and you're like, I'm sorry. I that <laughs> yeah. All right, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>